Hey there, marketing analytics students. In this video, we're going to give an overview of the process required to conduct a data-driven marketing segmentation project. And we're going to give a little bit of a conceptual overview of the data-driven segmentation tool that we're going to be using in the later video series, uh, specifically K-means clustering. So overall, there's about three big steps that we're going to need to conduct here to segment a market in a data-driven fashion. So in the first step, we're going to need to collect some data. Uh, often this comes from surveys, but it's not necessarily so. And all the data that we collect will constitute all the members of our market. We're going to use these measures to capture the underlying needs, preferences, attitudes, or beliefs uh, relevant to our company about uh, members of our market. So this is where we're going to actually try to find uh, information about what's actually in the mind of the consumer, right? So surveys are a popular way to try to get into the consumer mindset, and this is why we often use survey-based research to do so. In addition, we're not just going to collect consumer mindset variables, but we're also going to collect data that's going to help us identify people in the market. Often, this is behavioral and demographic data. And this is because in marketing, when we engage in the process of actually reaching out to consumers through targeting efforts, whether it's through media buys or through some sort of customer relationship management database, it is actually consumer or customer behavior that we have been tracking or we can use demographic information to make reliable predictions of how to reach individuals. Now, where does this data for step one even come from? Uh, as you may have just noticed, it turns out in this video, we're gonna presume that a magical business research angel provided us with this research. Um, now, step two is where we're gonna step in. We're going to use an unsupervised learning algorithm to cluster or segment the market for us. We're gonna be using K-means clustering, but there's a bunch of different types of unsupervised learning algorithms. And we're gonna use the mindset variables, the, the mental ideas that the consumer has about our product service or their needs in order to generate these segments. We're going to test a variety of different potential market segmentation schemes based on the consumer mind. And after doing so, we're going to interpret these things and select a single, final, useful segmentation solution. After we select a segmentation solution that we like, our next job is to build a prediction model. This prediction model is going to use behavioral data and demographic data, or one or the other, in order to try to predict the mindset of the consumer. So in terms of some basic background information, I used a term that you may not be familiar with yet. I used a phrase called unsupervised learning. Um, in machine learning, unsupervised learning is the kind of algorithm or tools or techniques we use when the structure of our data doesn't have any prescribed specific outcome. In other words, we don't have a dependent variable. We don't have a specific outcome in mind. Rather, we want the algorithm itself to find patterns in the data and structure and organize the data in a way that makes it easier for us to understand. And when you think about what market segmentation is, it really calls for an unsupervised learning algorithm. Segmentation says, here's a large set of information about our market. Organize that information in such a way that groups individual people into discrete, discrete clusters. So let me quickly contrast supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So far this semester, we've mostly been doing supervised learning, meaning we have had a specific outcome variable or dependent variable in mind. We have been trying to predict who will or won't churn from our telecom company, or we've been trying to estimate the customer lifetime value of a customer, or we might be trying to identify which of a series of brands is most preferred by a, by a uh, particular consumer. In all of these cases, it's considered a supervised learning example because we have a specific outcome in mind that we're trying to reach, or I'm sorry, that we're trying to predict. And then of course, examples like of this that we're familiar with is logistic regression or decision trees. For decision trees or logistic regression to work, we actually have to have a dependent variable in mind and that therefore it is a supervised learning technique. On the other hand, we are going to be working in this video series on unsupervised learning, where we're going to be trying to organize 
data into meaningful patterns, but we don't exactly know what constitutes a perfect organization of those patterns. And as we'll see, k-means clustering is one common and powerful technique to do so. So before we actually utilize RapidMiner to perform our data-driven market segmentation, let's talk about this k-means clustering algorithm. I'd like to try to give you a little bit of intuition behind how it actually functions. So when people talk about this thing called k-means clustering, there's a sentence that we use to describe what it does. Broadly speaking, and the reason we broadly speak here is because it's used in all kinds of fields, not just marketing, is that k-means clustering clusters n objects into k partitions along x attributes. And that sounds a little arcane for now, but we'll see how that fits into our marketing understanding in just a moment. So consider this data set. We're used to seeing individual customer responses or consumer responses in the rows, and that's exactly what we see here. For now, we'll call those n objects. Imagine that we want to take these n objects or consumers and we want to segment them into a couple different groups. So in other words, create a market segmentation. Well, that's going to constitute our k partitions. It's the number of segments that we are going to choose to separate each one of the consumers into. So what immediately becomes apparent here is that choice of the number of partitions, meaning number of segments, is something that we are going to have flexibility in just selecting. Finally, we have these x attributes. In this tan column here that's bracketed by the blue bars, this is a bunch of survey data that we collected from some craft beer drinkers in San Diego. Each one of these questions was scored on a one to five point scale, asking people their opinions related to drinking craft beer and their preferences for styles of craft beer. These are the variables that we're going to use to segment our market. So taking that strange phrase above for what k-means clustering is, we can recast this phrase into something that's a little more understandable for a marketer. k-means allows us to cluster a thousand customers into six segments using eight different measures of their opinions about craft beer. That's a sentence that a marketer can get their head around. Now let me give you an illustration of how k-means works. Now in this scenario, we're going to cluster 10 customers into three segments using two different measures of their opinions about craft beer. So it's a pretty simple example. So each one of these dots represents one of our 10 customers. Our two different measures, uh, since I wanted to show you this to you in a simple scatter plot, uh, I only used two measures. We have people who we ask them if they don't like heavy beer. So on a five, that means they really don't like heavy beer and a score of one means that they uh, do prefer heavy beer. And then we also have a measure of hoppiness, how bitter a beer is. So a score of five means they really like hoppy, bitter beers, and a one means they don't like hoppy, bitter beers. And if we look at the scatter plot of customers, we can immediately see that people are kind of spread in different degrees around this space. What we want to do is we want to take these 10 different people and we want to create three market segments to characterize all 10 of these individuals. These red points, which we're going to call centroids, represent our first guess about where these segments might belong. So this is precisely how k-means works. We will tell the algorithm how many segments we want to create, so those red dots. In this case, we literally told it we wanted to create three segments. And the k-means algorithm, using a series of sort of pre-processing tools, will drop those centroids somewhere on the space. And then it says, okay, now that there's three centroid segments here, which uh, centroid do I assign each one of the 10 people to? And it simply just uses a measure of distance. As a customer, whichever centroid you're the closest to, k-mean says, well, that's the segment that you belong to. And one of the things that becomes interesting here is, you know, imagine we have an 11th or 12th customer even though they're not on this particular scatter plot yet, because we already know where the centroids are, we can already draw the boundaries that would separate each one of these segments. So we know that if somebody was dropped anywhere within this green space, it would end up that they are closest to this bottommost centroid. So we know that they would belong to that segment. Now, Take a close look at where those red dots are located on the scatter plot right now. Let me ask you a question. 
do you think that we could move those red dots in such a way that minimizes the distance between the dots and the individual customers? In other words, look at all these red lines here. Could you imagine a way to sort of nudge and tweak these red centroid dots so that the total length of all of those red lines would be smaller? Well, this idea of moving the centroids in order to try to minimize that distance of those red lines is exactly what k-means does. Through an iterative procedure, it does this over multiple iterations, I'm showing you sort of the final solution here, it moves these little centroids so that it minimizes the total distance that it creates between all the points. And you'll have to forgive me that my drawing ability is not perfect. If you think you could place those red dots somewhere that got them, that made an even better solution, well, more power to you. So now that we've created a position for each one of these centroids that is optimal, meaning it's minimized the distance between the centroids and the data, we now have our final solution and we can now interpret these results in a way that's relevant for marketers. So for market, or for market segment A, which is 40% of the market, or 4 out of 10, we can observe that interpreting the centroid here, we can notice that these people tend to want lighter or hoppier beers. Why lighter? Well, notice that the centroid is, on a, is uh, lined up with a 4 on the not heavy preference scale. And hoppy because notice that the on the hoppiness preference scale, this centroid is on a four out of the five point scale. So that's why we would interpret that in general, people in this market want lighter, hoppier beers. On the other hand, segment B, they tend to want somewhat lighter beers and they want them to be not hoppy. And then finally, for segment C, it appears they want heavier beers, right? Sliding further away on this not heavy preference. And they're and it looks here as though they don't really want hoppy beers, but if we noticed for segment C, it turns out that none of the single points seem to be very close to the centroid. And notably, they seem to be kind of far away from the centroid with respect to the hoppiness. So that suggests maybe the opinions in this group on hoppiness tend to vary. So it's not just where the centroid is, but it's also how close all of the different dots are relevant to that thing called the centroid. Now that we've briefly walked through a few of the pieces of terminology and the process that we're going to need to go over to do data-driven market segmentation, that'll take us into our next and final video, where we actually do an end-to-end -end worked example of doing data-driven market segmentation using RapidMiner. See you there.